Question number two, Jackie Dean. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What steps has the government taken to move its books from an $18 billion deficit in 2011 back to surplus? The Honourable Bill well, Mr Speaker, the government has uh, taken a lot of steps because before the first, this government's first budget in 2009, Treasury was forecasting never-ending deficits and net debt blowing out to over 60 per cent of GDP, over twice the level that it currently is. And this was because of the combination of the financial crisis and the huge spending built in by the previous Labor government that included no consideration order, of impact. Order. Order. I apologise to the Minister. I have a point of order from Grant Robertson. Uh, Mr Speaker, you've ruled uh, several times in this House that uh, government questions to their own, uh, from their own members to ministers shouldn't be used to attack the opposition. That was a primary question being used for that purpose. I don't, I don't agree at all that the primary question was set down for that purpose. It was to inform members of this House. A legitimate question that was accepted. There was a huge amount of interjection coming from two particular members, and if the minister then takes the opportunity to respond to that interjection, that's legitimate as well. Speaker, the yes, could just to answer. finish off the answer, uh, so in the last seven budgets of this government, the annual cost of new initiatives has averaged around $600 million. In the seven budgets up to 2009, the the average cost of new initiatives was around three billion per year. Order. Supplementary question, Jackie Dean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What are the government's fiscal priorities now that it has delivered on its election promise and made us surplus in 2014-15? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr. Speaker, the focus now is on paying down debt. Governments have previously been able to get on top of debt because they relied on tax revenue windfalls helped by 4 to 5 per cent inflation, as occurred in the first decade after 2000. With inflation now at 0.1 per cent, uh, we can't rely on fast-growing tax revenue to achieve debt reduction. So we have to continue with tight management of our spending. Uh, we're doing this by better management of the government's huge asset base of $250 billion and also addressing the long-term drivers of our biggest area of spending, and that is in social services, health, education, uh, welfare and justice, uh, through our programme of social investment. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. In light of his uh, answer that his priority is paying down debt, is it correct that he will not begin to pay down a single cent of debt until 2020-21 financial year? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, the measure of debt is that, that we use, as previous governments has, is uh, debt as a percentage of GDP, and that's peaking about now. But certainly paying off nominal debt will require quite strict fiscal discipline because we can't rely on high inflation to deliver uh, big bursts of tax revenue. We've actually got to do what every household and business in New Zealand does, and that is work to the real income that we can earn. Supplementary question, David Seymour. Has the minister identified a level of surplus at which he will cut taxes? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, not a particular level of surplus. Uh, the, this government has uh, done what a tax switch in 2010, actually, when we had a deficit. Uh, because we were able to cover the cost of income tax reductions with increases in GST and property taxes. Uh, the government is committed to moderate tax cuts uh, over the next few years if fiscal conditions allow, and we've yet to see whether fiscal conditions will allow it. Supplementary question, Jackie Dean. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What benefits will paying down government debt bring to New Zealanders? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, holding and paying down debt uh, will allow New Zealand to be resilient, particularly to uh, changes in the global economy that might have a negative effect on us. To do that, we need to keep a tight rein on ineffective spending. 
If we can pay down debt, we'll also be in a better position to deal with long-term spending pressures such as superannuation. Our current public pension costs are around 5% of GDP. Uh, by 2050, the cost will increase to 8% of GDP, but to keep that in perspective, in the last four years, we've managed to reduce government spending as a proportion of GDP from 34 to 30%. So the reduction in government spending as a proportion of GDP in the last few years has been greater than the projected increase in national super through to 2050. Supplementary question, Jackie Dean. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What implications does a focus on paying down debt have on the way the government manages its books? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, now that the budget is broadly imbalanced uh, and there is a stronger focus on debt, we're not so concerned about small positive or negative fluctuations in the budget balance. And this is particularly true for the monthly Crown accounts, the next one of which will be released tomorrow because month to month the accounts can fluctuate depending on timing effects. The government manages the books by getting better results from our spending. That is, we're willing to spend more where we can get results, but if we can't get results, then we're not willing to spend money. For instance, on large-scale new tertiary education entitlements, because there's no evidence that that will make any difference to anybody. Order. Question number three, Materia Ture. Itimanga o te whare tina koe, tina koto 